Hey, Pete, so I told my community last night that I've just come across a new launcher, which is very similar to Launchbox, but this one's absolutely free, and it's got some really cool features. So let me get you set up with this and show you what Playlight has to offer. So if I just download this, and the link's in my description. So it's going to be a manager, which is going to scrape you artwork, just like Launchbox would. And it's also going to be another system where we're going to need to import our games and our emulators. So let's just install this a minute. And the first window you're going to see is install Play Night. If we go to options, you can even make this into a portable version, meaning everything will be stored within a folder. By default, this one's going to go to my C drive. If you want to put this somewhere else on your computer, then obviously just go to the browse option and select its destination. Like I say, I'm going to just use my C drive by default and install this. Now, while this one's installing, I've got a separate emulator, a standalone emulator, and this is Nestopia. So if I just open this one up a minute, uh, what we need to do is make our standalone emulators into full screen. So when we boot these up through Play Night, it's going to open into full screen. So for example, in Nestopia, to make this boot into full screen, once I load a game through it, I'm going to go to Options. And if I go to Preferences and switch to full screen on Startup, so if I just select this option and OK, so that's all good to go right now when we can launch that through Play Night loading up a game and that's going to boot our game into Nestopia through full screen mode. So I'm going to just quit out of here and go back into Play Night, which has now been installed. So the option here you need to look at is the little controller on the top left hand side. If you just left click on here and go to library and first thing we need to do is import the Nestopia or emulator of your choice into Play Night. So from library you need to go to configure emulators and here you're going to need to select the folder the emulator is located in. So as you could see a minute ago, my Nestopia is actually on my desktop. So if I go to installation folder, select folder, desktop, and my Nestopia folder is going to be in my Nest folder, which is on my desktop. So select folder and the name of this I'm going to just call Nestopia. And under emulator specification, if we just scroll down, we're going to find Nestopia listed. Just select this one. And I'm going to save this. So that's our Nestopia Nintendo NES emulator now imported. So the next thing we're going to need to do is actually get a game. So on my desktop, I'm using a Nightmare on Elm Street, which is a zip NES game. If I go back to the controller here, add game, and I'm going to go to emulate its game. And we're going to find add scanner. So this is very important that you add a scanner. Otherwise, your games aren't going to import. So if I just go to add scanner here, and first option you're going to see is scan with emulator. So Nestopia profile, I'm going to just leave as default. And the next option we got here is scan folder. Now, my NES game isn't in a folder, so I'm going to just quickly create a new folder. So right click on desktop, new folder, and I'm going to just call this one, say, NES games. I'm going to drag in my NES game, not my Elm Street, into the NES games folder and go back to scan folder. And I'm going to just highlight the NES games folder I've just created. So select folder and then start scan. And as we can see, this is straight away picked up my Nightmare on Elm Street game. So if you've got several games, just make sure they're all within a folder and it's going to pick up everything. Next thing we're going to do is import. And this is now going to import it into Play Night, as you can see. Now, it looks a little bit bland how it is because we've got no artwork, but we can change this. And if we go to the option just here, grid view, as you can see, we got Nightmare on Elm Street and we got the artwork for it, which Play Night is automatically downloaded. So let's try and open up Nightmare on Elm Street. Double left click on it. And as you can see, we've imported the NES Topia emulator and we've also imported the NES game and it's booted straight up into the full screen mode.
Okay, so as you can see, that's NES up and running fine. Now, just to remember, if you get no input from your controllers, then you need to go back to the emulator itself rather than do it through Play Night. So, for example, if I was to go back to the NES emulator, if I just go to input, I can then configure my PlayStation 3 controller to read from it. So, if you get no control input, that's how you do it. So next thing I'm going to show you to do, if we just go back to the controller just here, if I go down to switch to full screen mode, it's going to obviously open up Play Night in full screen mode, which looks pretty cool. And once you're in full screen mode, the options is now located on the right hand side. So if we just go back to the controller and we can exit back to the desktop mode, And Play Night even has free downloadable themes. So again, if we go back to the controller just here and we go to settings from here, if we go to general and we can get more themes. So if we just click on the get more themes, it's going to open up the Play Night website. And from here, you've got a selection of different themes. So just randomly, I'm going to select the classic desktop red. And I download that and it will open Play Night desktop application. And then back in Play Night, it will say, do you want to install a new theme? So yes, that's going to download. And Play Night then requires to restart. So press yes. And there we go. So things have changed color. So we got a red border around Freddy Krueger just there. Let's try this again. So if we go back to controller, settings, general, and get more themes. Let's try some a little bit more exciting. So let's go for the DH underscore Dawn. So download this, open Play Night desktop application. And do you want to install a new theme? So just press yes and restart. And there we go. So it's looking a bit bland right now because I've obviously just got one game installed. If we go back up to this little bar at the top, we can change how the games present themselves. So personally, I prefer this layout just here. I think this one's pretty cool. And of course, once you've changed your theme, you can change it back. So we're a little controller for this particular theme. It's now turned into this hexagon looking shape. So it's just a case of going back into this and finding settings and general and theme, I'm going to put this one back to default. Or in fact, I'm going to put classic Steam on, which I downloaded earlier. Uh, from this menu, you can even change the fonts. So let's just try this white Latin font and press save. And of course, we're going to need to restart this again. So there we go. It don't look the greatest, but it's just a setup, guys. So just to show you what Play Night can do. So we can see the font here has changed. And yeah, it looks a bit, uh, but there you go. So I'm going to change this font back to something a little bit more readable. Okay, so I'm going to go back to Agency FB and save and restart. So I'll say a minute ago, you can actually boot up your computer to boot straight into Play Night as well. So to do this, what we're going to do is go back to the controller or whichever shape you've got there. And if I go to settings, and once we're in settings, underneath appearance, we can launch Play Night when you start your computer. So if you just select this and save it, once you reboot your computer, it will obviously boot straight into Play Night. But I'm not going to do that, but that's optional for you. So that's it for my Play Night setup guide. It's very basic, but if any of you is interested in learning a little bit more Play Night and getting some more complex systems up and running on it, I'm really happy to do so. Just make sure to hit the notifications because I'm always uploading retro inspired content including emulators and so on and so forth. I'm also on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter. But until next time, stay retro.